Gran Canaria sits just off the northwest coast of Africa, in the centre of the Canary Islands. Its spectacular mountain landscapes make it an incredible place for cycling, with far more variety and adventure potential than you'd expect from such a small and relatively touristy place. I spent a couple of months bikepacking around Gran Canaria last year, and through a lot of trial and error, I gradually fine-tuned a new bikepacking route around the island, which I decided to call the Gran Canaria Grande. This winter, and along with a friend, I decided to head back out to put the finishing touches to the route. The complete loop takes around five days to ride, so it's the perfect length for anyone looking to take a week off work to fly away for a cycling adventure in the sun. The climate in Gran Canaria is pretty amazing, with good weather even in winter, and flights from most of Europe are really cheap, so the island is super accessible. Hello, my name is <laughs> Hello, my name is Egon. I come from Switzerland, the southern part of Switzerland, and I live in England, and that's where I met Tristan. Um, I work in the aviation. Uh, I'm a pilot and I uh, love bikepacking. To me, it's the, f the, the, free, the most free uh, a person can be. Because you can, you got the speed to actually cover distances and th see things, but the freedom of a hiker, you know? So you can properly see places. It's the best way to see a new country as well. And you're self-sufficient, you're just completely free. I feel like when you're bikepacking, you're the true traveler, traveler in a way. It's a perfect day, it's rather hot, it's got low 20s Celsius, which is quite a jump from the minus 5 I've had in the last week in England, but uh, yeah, God, it's so good to be back. With day one we started climbing straight up into the mountains and quickly you start seeing uh, that the landscape gets really interesting with um, these rock formations, big pillars. Um, you know, it's like a mixture between, it, sometimes it feels like you're in the Grand Canyon, sometimes it's like some parts of Jordan. I mean, on the coast, especially in the south, it's super busy. Everything's really built up and it's full of tourists. But as soon as you go up into the mountains, especially if you go off-road, there's hardly anyone there outside of the towns, so you usually have the views to yourself. So for the most part, resupply on the route is really easy. You generally go through at least one settlement every day, so you don't have to carry a lot of food. It's really nice to just roll into these beautiful mountain villages, stop for a coffee and a bite to eat, use the toilet, and then head back out again. There are some really beautiful villages in Gran Canaria, and with it being quite physically challenging on the route, we really look forward to taking breaks in cafes in the shade whenever we arrive back in civilization. Oh, this is steep. I and mean, this has got to be, I mean, what, 18, 20% easy. This is so steep. So here comes the single track section. A little bit less than flat, that one, wasn't it? Almost flat. Look at this goat here. This is a poser goat. Look at us. Hey, goat. That is a cool looking goat. Look at them balls. He's got a proper hairdo going on. Oh, now we've got attention. Oh, I think that's balls. <laughs> nice balls, bro. Nice balls, bro. <laughs> that's not making the video. <laughs> that's why you have to beat me out. Go on, buddy. Don't give up. Oh, he's, oh, he's gone. Good effort. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, turn this way. Keep going. 
Oh, keep going. Keep that momentum. Just like I did. I need to clean my lenses. I mean, what's life without a little bit of hiker bike? And this is one of the really cool things about Gran Canaria. Behind us, where we've just come from. Holy shit. Gone? We have super dry, rocky, kind of arid, pretty spectacular. And then back this way, it's all trees. It's all uh, big, beautiful pine trees. When it comes to sleeping, there aren't really many options for accommodation in the mountainous parts of Gran Canaria, so camping is kind of the only way to do it. Wild camping is technically not allowed, but as long as you find somewhere out of sight, you don't make a mess and you don't make any fires, I don't really think there's a problem. There are also a handful of designated free public campsites around the island, and the route goes past most of them, which makes things really easy. The first and last nights in particular worked out perfectly with the public campsites, so we used them for those two nights and wild camp for the rest. Hey man, day one, well done. Good. Yeah, great timing with the sunset there. Yeah. Gonna be lucky with the weather. Yeah, works out really well, doesn't it? Well, it's time to crack one open. Yeah, let's grab a beer. Beer and food. Which first? Beer first. Oh. Cheers, man. Cheers. Congrats. Well done for today. Oh god, that goes down well. Morning coffee. Morning whatever this is. <laughs> Definitely a tuna. Touch of tuna. <laughs> tuna coffee. Mmm. Ah, not the one. How are you feeling about day two? Pretty stoked actually. I got into the groove. You go. You lost your hat. If anyone sees my hat, contact the number below. Oh man, we should just go back. <laughs> it's not even worth it. Go back to the start again. New hat. <laughs> go back to find a new hat. A woolly hat. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling awesome, man. Yeah, yesterday man. was sick, and today's I know today's going to be even better. Yeah, um, we've got a big climb ahead. Yeah, a big climb, but then we've got a 2,000 meter descent. 2,000 meter descent. That's gonna be sick.
How are you feeling? Pretty good. Oh, I need a break. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. Coffee? Oh, Coffee number two of the day, four total. Well, for you, three for me. Ooh, I can't wait for my juice. Be aware it's a tough route, um, even though it's not a long route, because I looked at it and I felt bad. This is not a long distance, but it's a lot of up and down. Don't underestimate it. I did not train at all for this one. Because um, of work, I, I didn't really have the chance to do any bikepacking for the last uh, three, four months. And so it was a bit of a shock to the system. I, I had some knee pain and nothing that stopped me. But because you're going to start climbing from day one and it's, you know, it's a long way up, to make it more pleasant for you, just train a little bit. Uh, make sure that you cycle a bit in the, in the, in the, in the weeks leading to this mission, to this route. So yeah, just be aware it's a, it's a tough route. And carry water. Carry lots of water. It's it, it can get really hot out here. There's a five and a half. For most of the route, you get to feel like you're pretty well off the beaten track. But there are a couple of specific places that are touristy, which I decided to include on the route. Even though they're touristy, I do think those places are really worth including because they are so spectacular and any trip to Grand Canaria wouldn't quite be complete without checking those off your list. All right, last little climb before the top. Ooh, How are we feeling, you going? Very good. Feeling good. Yep. Come on, Come on legs. Nearly there. This way. Yeah, last couple of hundred meters. You got it, buddy. Yeah, buddy, hold on. Well done, man. That's, uh, that's incredible. Look, honestly, it looks like Tenerife is just there. Don't look that far away. So how you feel, man? Yeah, anyway, that was a tough climb. I'm pretty tired, but we're going down now. Well, we're at nearly 2,000 meters. From here, it is almost still downhill. So we, we still got to go a bit up. Or... Well, it's we're going down to sea level. I mean, it's a bit undulating on the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mostly, mostly down. Here, you coffee. Coffee it is. Well, it is all downhill to the cafe. Feeling ready? I am ready for a downhill. Place already. Nope, not yet. Okay, no, let's carry on. It's lunch. Eh? <laughs> mm. It's lovely. That's beautiful. Good stuff. Mm. What's life without a bit of hiker bike? The Gran Canaria Grande has a pretty wide mix of surfaces and road types, which definitely keeps it interesting. Traffic in the mountains is generally light, so there are a fair few paved roads along the route, but also gravel roads, dirt roads, forest trails, and single track. For the most part, the route is non-technical, which was a deliberate choice to make sure the route was as accessible as possible. There are a fair few sections where there are single track alternatives to the main route, but single track in Gran Canaria tends to be very steep, rocky, and technical. So these trails are generally better suited to hiking, or at least riding unloaded. 
but yeah, for the most part, the route is pretty straightforward to cycle, and there's some pretty great downhills in there, so the riding is a lot of fun. So we're shopping at Spa, our bikes are here, Tristan is inside, in this lovely little town that I forgot what it's called. My favorite part of this bar is that there's, they made the logo into stone here in this courtyard. How amazing is that? Well done, Spar. My favorite part, um, I think it was the, uh, the, the, the Green Valley. We, we call it this way. I mean, I'm not sure what the name of that valley is, but there's a valley that we call the Green Valley because it's a, it's this incredible place um, where you're dropping down from the higher elevations of this island down into this steep valley that then drops down to sea level. And the location and the shape of it, there's something about it that makes it so um, you know, prone to accumulating moist, uh, moisture and just generally water. So it's very green. There's a lot of grass. Um, it's almost like a jungle in some bits. It's a totally different vibe from the island because most of the island is quite, you know, uh, desertic and arid. But uh, yeah, this green valley is incredibly beautiful. It's so steep and uh, full of, you know, surprises and you know, twists and turns. And, and also the, 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 the really cool thing about uh, this valley is that there's, um, you can't drive it, There's, the road does not connect because of the steepness. So you, you know, cycling um, or hiking are the only ways to actually see it. Uh, but of course, there's some hiker bike, so you have to earn the Green Valley. <laughs> All right, so. Well, when you have to hike a bike down, downhill, you know you're fucked. Okay. Uh, I, well, you know, American stop complaining Valley. because you could be doing this uphill. Yeah, but I'm saying, <laughs> if you're hiking biking down here. Well, yeah, then you know it's steep. Stones go down here. That's true. Well, we will too. It's, you, you just got to stop yourself from going downhill too fast. Ah, what's life without a bit of hiking bike? <laughs> oh, uh, that's the spirit of bike packing. Come on. So the situation is, it got dark. We got slowed down on this terrible donkey trail because of Tristan's planning, obviously. And not because of me being slow. And we found some caves. And these caves are actually really nice. And the only scary thing is, is there's a bit of a shrine here. I mean, it's normal lyrics, but you know, you never trust a shrine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what am I being blamed for? This was always the plan. This was always the plan. Freeze! Add this down to the day. Lovely. <laughs> this man knows something about Airbnbs, huh? Hope we could make a fire in here. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Cozy home. Look at him. <laughs> Definitely dodgy as hell. Oh, if you're ever wondering, like, what lives in dodgy caves in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's, it's this guy. It's this, it's, it's this, this. Guys, if you find this and I'm, like, you know, dead or maybe eaten. Currently he's doing a chicken dance. Show me your house. So, I am TV, welcome to my crib. So, I mean, the main bed is gone now, but here we are. Very I love cozy. what you've done with the place. It's so cozy. It, it's inspirational messages like follow your inner son or love and peace. And there's another one, but 
There's some like song lyrics here. There's some stars up here. Oh yeah, there's some stars and there's like an um, armchair and a lamp. Fucking bastard. Yeah. What place oh, to live? Yeah. Coffee number one of the day. Number something for the trip. Six? I think we're on six. I think it's seven. You're on six. Well, I'm We'll, see. Mm. we'll have to go back and check the footage. And the counter on whatever quarter will be updated now. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe. Like and subscribe. Okay, so how was the last day? Yesterday was quite a tough one because we, we had a lot of climbs and in the end we didn't do a lot of kilometers, but mainly because of the route and for example today well yesterday evening we were hiker biking down this trail yeah it's a descending hiker bike you were complaining you were like oh why are we going downhill hiker bike i've got it on video brother there's there's some serious complaining going that on that seemed to me adoring it <laughs> <laughs> no but generally it just slowed us down it's awesome though because uh, we ended up in this amazing place where we are now we're camped in a cave so honestly that we, we won in any case but I'm really stoked because, um, yeah, it just looks beautiful. We, we stumbled upon this green valley and it's incredible. It's nothing like, you know, you see in other places in Gran Canaria where it's kind of arid. Here's like proper green. You know, look at this grass. It makes you wonder where does it get the moisture from because there's no water. But yeah. Having fun. Having fun. Nice. Let's see where day three takes us. All right. Don't have any rubbish. You got it all on your bike there. Leave no trace, guys. Very important. So, the problem we've had, we've made the mistake of over dicking around, having too much fun drinking coffees and just chilling out, really. chilling out down by the beach. Oh, and it's now nearly one o'clock, it's the hottest time of the day. We really haven't done anything to We've done very little today, and we've now got a 1500 meter, 2000 meter ish climb. Well, there's downs in there as well. But I've got a lot of climbing to do. We've had to hit the resupply heavy because we're not going to make it to the next resupply point before tomorrow morning, which means we're now calling, I'm carrying about five, five and a half liters of water up this massive climb. So yeah, we've, yeah. we've had too much fun. Time, fun is the enemy. Yeah, but there's a very, very good spot coming up. So look, this is- Oh yeah, the next bit's going to be unreal. Well, so it'll be worth it. worth it. But anyway, we should probably stop talking to the camera and just go. Should we do that? Let's go. Right, we are we're doing pretty good. We've got off the busier bit of the road, turned off to the abandoned old road. Still going up, very, very beautiful, quite hot. Very hot. And yeah, what an amazing place.
The Old Coastal Road is one of my favourite sections because it's so completely different to the rest of the route. The GC200 was closed permanently in 2016 due to a massive avalanche and a new road featuring multiple tunnels was built to replace it. The abandoned old road is still there and although the route only follows a small part of it before turning inland, it's enough to give you a feel for what is easily one of my favourite coastal roads in the world. From where the route turns off the GC200 to go inland, it's only a 5 minute detour to see the avalanche, so it's definitely worth going to have a look. So after quite a few hours of going uphill on deserted paved roads, we've graduated to the next stage, which is of course going uphill on deserted unpaved roads. This is very cool. Oh, it's so yeah, it's is it like, is it like clay? It's clay, like green there, what the fuck? Huh. I've never seen anything like this. May well, maybe sometimes you see it in the ground, but you don't see like the cross section of it, so. It's very bizarre. Very cool. So we've discovered some natural landmarks. Up ahead we have, well, this is the, the lion's head. Yeah. Which is pretty awesome. It's yeah. overlooking the road. Which is a pub. That's a pub, yeah. And then up here. We have a natural arch, yeah. just here, we, which just... Uh, Egon has just very creatively named. What did you decide the name for it was? I changed, I changed my mind. It's, <laughs> it's called Knee Pain Arch. Knee Pain Arch. How is your knee, Egon? Egon's suffering from some some knee pain. Knee feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's all downhill from here. It's going to be really easy. It's good if I go through a sudden threshold of pain, I just won't feel it anymore. Yeah, I mean, so, that's that's medically sound advice. Just ignore it completely and, and continue. Two professionals, don't try, don't try this. <laughs> I need to just put up some flashing disclaimers <laughs> here on the screen. Do not do not do what we do. Do not try this at home. Do not try this at home. This act was performed by two <laughs> professionals. So we've just come up on this spot overlooking the coast off towards Tenerife, Ada, and the sunset. And I just don't think we're gonna beat this for a camp spot. I mean, what a place this is gonna to be to spend the night. What a day. Egan's just on his way up. Yeah, what a day. Morning coffee. Cheers. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it would be hard to say goodbye to this view. Yeah, man, this place has been absolutely incredible. It was probably one of the best camp, camp spots we ever found. Yeah, what an amazing place. Still got quite a lot of climbing to do today, so I hope your knees hold up. <sighs> yeah. Going right next, right up over that ridge. And then down, and then up. Yeah, it's up. And then down, up and then and up. Up. <laughs> and then up. And then eventually down. There is an event. There is an eventual down. So one of my favourite things about Gran Canaria is that when you're in the mountains, you always have these big landmark rocks like Nublo on the skyline as a reference point to help give you your bearings. Gran Canaria is centered around this enormous valley, which we decided to call the Valley of Dreams because it's so spectacular. And the route goes all the way around it, so you get to see it from so many different angles and get a real feel for how the island is laid out. Well, 
sketchy one-handed. Well, that was a pretty epic descent, I have to say. And now we've got another big climb up into the next town, Tejeda. Right, we are now on the way up to Rock Bendega, which is the last, last little rock on our checklist. And uh, then we're gonna be heading back up and then round to our campsite. So we are gonna go back down the road to here. Then we follow that road round and then it's this road all the way up. It's like a long constant to climb. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's uh... And then a pass, which means on the other side you just descend anywhere, right? Yep, more or less. Yeah, it's all, uh, all easy and downhill from here. Yeah. Except all the uphill bits. Well, we will ignore those. <laughs> well, it could be worse. We could be walking this road like they are. Yeah, walking, God, what an idea. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, go, to, go with Tristan cycling. Um, you'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Guys, I think I broke you, God. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm not going mad. <laughs> I'm good. He's, he's doing great. You're doing amazing, honestly. Is that far enough down there? <laughs> he, think, he thinks he's in England. I've truly broken him. I'm in England, I'm in England. <laughs> I'm truly, I have ruined this man. <laughs> All the coffees in the world can't save you now. Well, maybe that's what this is. This just had too much coffee and your leg is now shaking. <laughs> maybe it's nothing to do with the cycling. Uh, I honestly have so much coffee every day. Um, maybe, it's maybe it's withdrawal then. You're only averaging like three coffees a day. I think so. And that's not enough for you. Coffee is a drug, guys. Be very careful. It's not a drug. It's not a drug. It's not a drug. <laughs> right, let's crack on, shall we? All right, well, we've got a nice downhill now. Yeah. Massive downhill. And yeah, then we, we go. to say goodbye to the Valley of Dreams. Yeah, very sad to be leaving. Over the pass, and then uh, we get to see the sea probably on the other side. All right, the sun has just set, I think, or is currently setting. We've made it to the view above Presa de las Niñas, this reservoir down here, and crazy views. We just have one more descent to do for the day, and then we should make it to camp. Um, um, this is one of the best views we, we had yet. You've been saying that a lot. Yeah, I say that because every time I see in Gran Canaria, <laughs> It's even better. That's true. That's and true. also this one makes me nostalgic because it reminds me of home in Switzerland. Switzerland, huh? Yeah, which is very similar to Surrey and West Sussex. <laughs> Uh, 
a nice thing about if you spend the entire day cycling up and down mountains end of the day it doesn't matter what your food is it could be the most boring meal in the world delicious it's gonna taste better than anything you've ever eaten <laughs> mm. so last night unless we stay here tonight could just go do the whole route again <laughs> backwards <laughs> so we did a hack a bike um, uphill yeah it was too easy the first time mm -hmm. So yeah, how do you feel about this coming to an end? I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad actually. Yeah. It's a shame. <laughs> I wish I could carry on for a bit longer. Yeah. Breakfast of coffee, Birka and musli. granola. Birka um, musli. Musli. Pretty much the same thing. This muesli with hot water. What is this? How are you feeling about this being the last day? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Because I, I'm actually sad this is over already. It's, this is day five, but wish we could continue longer. It has been a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, still pretty pretty happy about the descent today. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't get any ideas. There's still a bit of climbing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, actually, uh, like every trip I ever take, where, you know, when you start, you just, all you want is to get, you know, get it over with, like, you know, get to the finish point. When you get in the rhythm every time, then you just want to continue. You got so much momentum, you know? Yeah, five days isn't really enough, is it? No, but it's fine. Yeah. I could say that I've seen a good chunk of Great Canarian. Yeah, you've seen a lot more than most people ever will. Yeah, I'd like to say so. And it's a good campsite. Good way to finish the trip. Yeah, well, we've got a pretty amazing descent coming up. And uh, there is a place where we can get a coffee after the first kind of bit of the descent. So don't worry, calm, your, calm yourself. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Where? It's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's enjoy the last, last bit of the day. The last bit of the ride. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yalla! Vamonos! The final off-road descent of the route is pretty rough, and it's definitely one of the sections where it's nice to have a mountain bike. The route is totally doable on a gravel bike, which I think is important as it makes the route a lot more accessible, especially with gravel cycling being as popular as it is. I would still suggest bringing the widest tyres you can, as certain sections are likely to be pretty rough on skinnies, but there's not too much of that, and the views are always worth it. This is going to be your last coffee of the day, of the trip, I think. Okay. You sure? Okay, we'll probably have one more down in Mass Yeah, very likely. Yeah, probably penultimate coffee. Mm. As well as being an amazing place to get off-road, Gran Canaria is really a road cyclist paradise, with a whole bunch of incredible climbs on good paved roads with very little traffic, so you'll probably meet a fair few roadies along the way. The Gran Canaria Grande finishes with a descent down one of these huge passes from Soria to the coast. It's a super fun way to polish off the route.
right, buddy. We're now within sight of uh, Mas Palumas. Can, uh, can just about see it over there. Super, super windy. A lot of headwind. A lot of cyclists on the road. How are you feeling? Probably not going to be able to use any of this because it's so bloody windy here. I'm not going to have any sound effects at all. All you're, you're going to hear you talking is just going to be... Great content. Great content. Last couple of kilometers into the city of Maspalomas, my coffee awaits. Junkie. You disgust me. I shouldn't be encouraging a sick habit. <laughs> Alright, well, let's do it. It was amazing getting to ride the full route a year after I started working on it. I have a lot of love for Gran Canaria. It's such an incredible place for bike packing, and I think this route does a great job in showcasing what makes the island so special. It was also a lot of fun to ride it with Egon. His knee was giving him quite a lot of trouble, but he never complained and just powered through the pain. So I have a lot of respect for him for that. Yeah, buddy. Did it. Nice one. Smashed it. Coming here with no expectations, I was surprised because it's such a beautiful place. Way more complicated than I thought. There's so many valleys coming out from the center with different climates. Yeah, this route is, is the perfect way to see you know, kind of like the whole thing. You keep going up and down in valleys. You get these amazing campgrounds to, to camp. Um, and the roads are in, very interesting. This, this really good single trail, this good uh, gravel, but also paved sometimes. So to me, this route is really, yeah, the best way to actually see the island. You know, get, come here for a week and get away thinking and you know, knowing that you properly, you, you had a proper taste of what Grand Canaria has to offer. My experience was in, in, incredible. It's, it's so beautiful and uh, you know, it's stunning, keeps, keeps surprising you.